That's my dog, Bruno. <laughs> Bruno. What's what was that song by Bruno Mars? <laughs> the dancing Jews. Um, small dogs like that get great hang time when you punt them. You ever found that out? No, Bruno's quite big. He's a basset. Oh, all I saw was the tail go by at the very end. I had a bulldog, an English bulldog. They're dumb as hell, but he was cute. I mean, he got upstairs one day, and I don't know how. I'm like, <laughs> like Bentley, and he's trying to come down the stairs, and they're so top heavy that he actually, and his arms are like behind him. <laughs> he fell down, down the stairs. He got up. He slid into the wall, got up, walked away. Like, hey, okay. <clears throat> So the procuring cause, I'm telling you now, this is the number one argument you will have your whole career, right here. These two words, procuring cause. Are you the reason this sale consummated? Is it your fault? The answer here is you want it to be your fault. I'm the one that listed the house. That makes it my fault. I'm the one that brought the buyer in. That makes it my fault. You want to be your fault in this particular case. But here's what's going to happen in the real world. Ross is going to work with a client. Then one Saturday, he decides not to go out because he's not feeling well. And he calls Lashana. And so the client calls Lashana. And Lashana says, well, yeah, I'll go show you the house. And they write the offer. Ross is going to call Lashana and go, what the hell are you doing? You stole my client. And they're going to say, well, Lashana brought him in. She's the procuring cause. She's going to get paid. Ross is like, no, it's not. It's my client. And let the argument ensue. All right. So this is the number one thing we argue about. Whose client was it? Did Ross show it to him? And then Christina wrote the offer? Did Sarah talk to them, but never really showed them the house? And then they went, oh, my, my neighbor's son's graduating school named Ross. We're going to use him. So this is where all the arguments come in a lot. Who was the procuring cause? And tomorrow, <coughs> not tomorrow, depending on how this works out, chapter nine, we're going to talk about what forms you would use to secure that. But so just keep that in mind, procuring cause. It is a series of events that ultimately lead to the consummation of the sale. I want it to be my fault in this particular case. Now, when you guys sign, so that's the commission. When you guys sign on with me in our independent contractor, we are going to agree on how we split that commission. All right. So I know that you guys coming on might be new. You're going to need a lot of work out of the gate. And for that, I am going to keep a large portion of the money. So I may tell you, look, you want to come work for me? That's fine. Your first year is a 50-50 split. I get half of the commission. You get the other half of the commission. And that's how we split it. All right? So as the listing agent, I decide the listing commission. So let's see. Here we go. So if I listed a house at 125,000 at 6%, what was the commission I charged? This is gonna be a little harder doing it this way. So that means you guys are gonna to have to constantly keep unmuting. 
everybody. So that's, this is easily how it's done. I listed your mom's house. I charged 6%. We got 125,000. So the commission I earned <coughs> was $7,500. All right. Now, of this 7,500, I want to tell you one other thing here that we haven't told you, talked about yet. In order to get the buyer's agent to bring a buyer, I give away this thing here called the BAC. The BAC stands for the Buyer's Agent Commission. Of that BAC, I am going to give away, and this is my decision, 50%. So that means of this 7,500 that I give away, that I have earned, I hope I did this math right, 3,750 of it is going to go to the buyer's agent and the other half, the other 3,750 is going to our, the modulin group, right? Everybody shake your head if, if you got what I'm saying. Okay, so let me clear this out here real quick. Of that 3750, you and I, now you and I are on that 50 50 split. So somebody tell me what 50% of that is. 1875. So that means I made $1,875. And you made $1,875. What happened to the other 3,750 that went to the buyer side? Here's the answer. I don't care. I don't care. I gave that portion away. All right. And that I gave that to the Remax company so that when they brought a buyer in, that agent got paid. Who did we just lose? Ross. Ross. Are you there, Ross? <laughs> Says. Huh. All right. So of that, 37.50 goes away. All right, so let's do a couple of others just for fun to make sure that we've got it straight because this is going to be a very common test question and this is the math that everybody loves, all right? So let's go back over here. File new, don't save. So if we listed a house and sold it for 175 at five and a half percent, and then you and I of that five and a half percent, I split it 50 50 with the buyer. And then you and I are on a 70-30 split. Now, on anytime you see a split like this where it says 70-30, you as the agent are always the bigger number. I wish I could only give you guys 30%, but that ain't going to happen. All right? So tell me, my question to you is, how much did you get paid? I will do the math as well. 
and come up with a number. Three hundred and sixty-eight dollars and seventy-five cents. Mm -hmm. 